reported by The Athletic, the reigning champion Lakers nearing a deal with sixth man of the year Montrez Harrell. Patrick De Beverly initially tweeting, again, a lot of fun on NBA Twitter this evening. Uh, what? with several choice emojis, but then he did come back and say, for real, for real, I'm happy for him though. So let me start with you, GA, on Dwight. What's gonna be expected from him in Philly? I, well, listen, I'm a little shocked that he decided to go that route. He's The minutes are gonna be there based on how much Joel plays. Remember, this is not a scenario where he's gonna be on the floor with Joel and B. Uh, he is purely going to play backup minutes. And at this stage of his career, it's probably all he was going to get anyway. It, it's just a matter of what are you looking to do big picture. Uh, it does uh, put him back with Daryl Morey, but this is a guy that did help the Lakers win a championship, played a vital role. Uh, and now he gets to go to Philadelphia and see if he can help that team get to the finals. Uh, I, I was a little surprised by this, but big picture, if you're the Lakers, I, I think they got to be thrilled with what they've been able to accomplish thus far this offseason with not just getting Schroeder, but also Montrezl Harrell, because it not only helps their roster, but it also really uh, impacts negatively the Clippers roster and losing him. Let's talk more about that deal, Tom. How did it go down with Montrezl? And do you see him in a similar role off the bench? Man, how about Montrez? Taking his 19 points a game, his seven boards, and his six man of the year trophy about 82 feet down the Staples Center hallway. Amazing pickup for the Lakers, and what a blow to the Clippers. Montrez Harrell represented the spirit of that team, the fight. He was beloved by Clipperland, and for him to just go over to the purple and gold, wow, that is a big deal given the importance of the Laker Clipper battle for the championship out here in the West. And then Dwight, man, put your phone down. You know, <laughs> there's no reason to tweet before you got a deal, right? And then I don't know why he's in such a hurry to take a deal tonight. Yeah. He basically took something near the minimum. What was the rush as a veteran with all the money he's made? Why not wait and see where you go? But I guess the Sixers really wanted him. And he couldn't get the answer out of the Lakers, and he was just dying to make his announcement. This yeah. is really wild. Well, let's well, talk well, a little bit more about the, uh, the the 82 feet between those locker rooms that you mentioned at Staples yeah. Center, because not only has Wes, Wes Matthews uh, as a free agent agreeing, uh, you know, with the reigning champion Lakers on a one-year deal worth $3.6 million, but we're also hearing now, GA, that Marcus Morris will agree to, to stay with the Clippers as well. So, again, things starting to take shape in L.A. Yeah, if you're the Lakers, I think they're really thrilled. And, to, and really to Tom's point, too, for, for Dwight, you're signing a minimum contract in essence. So you could wait till the day before camp to sign a minimum contract. I mean, that there's no real financial benefit in that regard. And you've given up an opportunity to possibly have a chance to win another world championship. Um, but in terms of that that dynamic between the Clippers and the Lakers, you you got to tip your cap. You know, and I, I was following on social media. People are saying, well, you know, the Clippers proved that, that Montrez wasn't that valuable. And, and the point I made, Montrez Harrell was the third most important player for the Clippers. For the Lakers, he's probably the fifth. That's a big difference. And I think that's why he will be more AD recently opted out of his player option, but he is expected to sign a long-term deal to stay in L.A. Earlier today, ESPN reported AD's desire to wait until after Thanksgiving to put pen to paper. Gordon Hayward of the Boston Celtics also opted out of his player option in order to explore free agency. He averaged more than 17 points and six rebounds in 52 games for the C's last season. But some other teams have gained some traction here, though. Earlier this week, the Wall Street jerk calling Fred Van Vliet the undrafted $100 million player, despite being one of the best players available on the open market. ESPN has reported it's very likely that he returns to the Raptors as the team does have the ability to offer a five-year contract right in the range of $138 million. But like I said, we've got to get into what has happened today, guys, because there has been a lot. According to his agent, Danilo Gallinari has agreed to join the Atlanta Hawks for three years with a contract worth $61.5 million. He spent last season with the OKC Thunder after signing a similar contract with the Clippers back in 2017. GA, let me start with you. What is the expectation here for Gallo in ATL? 
Well, I think it's a great sign, first and foremost, for Atlanta. This is a team that they've got a budding star, obviously, with Trey Young. But they need veteran leadership, and they need guys that can be productive. And Danilo Gallinari has been one thing, and that's productive throughout his entire career. I think he fits in seamlessly. Plus, he has the ability to play multiple positions. He can play the stretch four. He can play the small four position. He gets to the free throw line. I, I think it's a great get for them. And it shows you that it's a team that's trying to take that next step to get to the postseason. And Gallinari is, I think, a welcome asset for the Hawks. How important, Tom, can that veteran leadership be for this team? If it's the right veteran, it's critical, and he is the right veteran for all the reasons Greg said, but also he's just a great pro. He's a great locker room guy. He just shows up and does his work. Certain free agents come in, you know, expecting to get a ring. Of course, only one team gets a ring, and then you get drama that follows after that. I want out of here. I don't. Gallinari's going to show up every day. He's going to perform the way Greg said. And then he's going to help nurture the young guys along and advance them from just being early legit to being maybe playoff legit sooner than rather than later in Atlanta. Well, also, according to his agent, Joe Harris has agreed to a four year deal worth seventy five million dollars to return to Brooklyn. <laughs> Tom, let me stay with you because we may know little about what the Nets roster this season is going to look like. But a shooter to surround any potential superstar has got to be a beneficial signing. That's right. All those shots being knocked down pays off, right, Joe? Good for you. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense because you're going to get a lot more open looks with those other two guys coming along. The Kyrie and KD show is going to create so many wide open looks, toe the line, knock it down with confidence. He's proven he's pressure packed as well. He's done it and performed well as they had their innocent rise without the all stars there. Now he's got all star support. It's going to be very interesting to see how well he performs. This was their main priority. They got it done. Also, a shooter used to knocking down shots, Davis Bertans, who opted out of the NBA's restart on campus in Orlando, has also agreed to a five-year deal worth $80 million to stay in D.C. and play for the Wizards. This, according to his agent, the deal will include an early termination option in year five. G.A., when this deal is inked, this decision to opt out of the restart to protect his health will likely have been the best one. Yeah, and in fairness to Davis, I don't think he, he was worried about the free agency. I think he had already cemented that with how well he had performed. Remember, this is a guy who had doubled his scoring average 